start the live so I can get the link and send it to you. And there we go. Yeah, my uh, Friday night shows, I air them on my other channel. Uh, we'll premiere, like I do the Friday night shows live on one channel, then I premiere it on the other channel. Oh, nice. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there in the chat room is the link for tonight's show, um, and it's also for the archive as well. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You got a G there. Uh oh. There's a Bible with W first G Dan Badandi and Holly Bayo. Uh oh. I can go back. Oh see I put W G uh with guest. Oh okay. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I, don't worry. I apologize. <laughs> When I was a secretary, I always used to take shortcuts, so I apologize about that. <laughs> but I meant with guests. Uh, I should have wrote wrote that out though, but I can go back and change it. So. Okay, and. Uh, I think I'm about ready when you are. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Hang on a second. I'm going to start the intro. <laughs> Heavenly Abba, that is all our praise, love, glory, singing, and worship to you who sits on the throne and will never be usurped in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Selah. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining me this evening. I really, really deeply appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, for my guests out there, this is Dan Bedondi, and he has a website. It's truthradioshow.com, and uh, he premieres, I think, Saturday evenings and also is it Monday or Wednesday? Oh, live shows um, Monday, Wednesday, twice on Friday, and um, of course we run premieres all through the week on um, both of our channels, all three of our channels, I should say. Okay, and that's under your name, Dan Bedondi. Yep, uh, the best way to find it is instead of going because I go to Rumble, the two YouTube channels. Uh, if you go to truthradioshow.com, it just has the links right there, and uh, subscribe to the platforms and you'll get the notifications. Okay, great. I typed that into the chat room. Uh, so Dan, can I ask you um, a little bit about your background and what even got you into being a watchman for Heavenly Abba? Um, just a person that grew up always questioning things. And if I seen something wrong, I would, <laughs> I would voice out about it, you know what I mean? And I, I couldn't keep my mouth shut about it. So, uh, <laughs> and I, I was always thinking, like, something always picking at you. Like, there's something wrong with this or that, whatever. And, yep. and you wanted to know what it was, you know what I mean? There was a quest of truth, whatever. And I've always believed in God and everything. And uh, even when I was dumb and went, you know, uh, did, you know went to the occult for a while, different uh, styles there. And uh, so, you know, little witchcraft and whatnot. And um, yeah, I didn't know any better. But even then, I still believe in God. But the fathers led me out of that garbage. And um, 
you know, wow. I'm happy for that. But my question, the truth is basically when, again, you see stuff going on in the world that, yeah, there's something that just doesn't sit right. It's something you know in your heart that's not right. And uh, you want to challenge it, you know what I mean? And even if it goes against the whole status quo, the popular vote and everything else, you know what I mean? You want to challenge that. And uh, that's where that began, you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's been crazy. So uh, one day, uh, you know, I got further into the faith and started doing some research on things and all that. And um, and it got worse, you know what I mean? Like in a good way, though, you know? And uh, it's always picking at me like a splinter, you know? Right. Not to sound like the movie Matrix, but it was something <laughs> similar to that, you know what I mean? And, um, I always felt there was something wrong with the world, just couldn't put my finger on it. Then um, yeah. one day I just had a nice discussion with the father. It's like, I know you're trying to tell me something, you know? And I, you say, who has an ear, let him hear. Who has an ear, uh, see, I am sorry, let him see. I got eyes and I got ears I want to hear and see. And like that night, I mean, I, if I'm in my sleep, I just, it felt like people, uh, not people, I'm sorry, uh, things were downloading to my head, you know what I mean? I, and all, all this information and, uh, and of course I fact checked everything and all that stuff to make sure it's from God and all that, you know? And, uh, but uh, it, yeah, ever since then, it's just like, and then I'm like, it would be so cool to do a radio show. And in 2009, my uncle, um, I haven't talked to him in a while because he, he went off to the American Idol to be a PR person for him. So he came back and he uh, started running a radio station in part of Rhode Island. Nice. And um, so the, the radio show fell in my lap. The first was a paranormal show and uh, and the whole night slot was open. And I said, well, can I do a new show? He goes, yeah, go for it. You get the whole night to do what you want. So <laughs> that was out of Truth Radio. And I uh, just grew from there and I got into activism, uh, going to rallies, uh, you know, doing all kinds of stuff, confronting politicians and all that. and. I uh, started my own chapter of We Are Change. It was part of the We Are Change organization, but um, my own chapter of Rhode Island. And, um, you yeah, know, then later on, got involved with InfoWars, won the reporter contest, and, you know, just took off from there. Oh, wow. That is awesome. I'm so glad that uh, this radio show dropped in your lap because I've been following you on YouTube for years, Dan. So oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow, incredible. Yeah. Sorry. Radio station, the AM station in Providence, WLE 990 AM. Then uh, there was another station up there, it was an internet station, uh, 990 WBOB. They came to the station, and I started doing shows with them too. Then uh, alternate current radio, the Shake and Wake radio, and uh, just like bouncing all over the place. Then I went to Infowars and uh, and you know did you know my stuff over Infowars and come back home and started my own little show up again, and I uh, just went full stream after that. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. So this must be killing you with Joe Biden in office. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're not, we're not censored here, so it's okay to say COVID and vaccine. We're, we're not going to be shut down here on Fringe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm dying to ask, what do, you, what do you see happening in the White House? Um, treason. <laughs> treason. <laughs> it's not treason that's going on the way house and, uh, and a communist dictatorship being set up. That's what I see. I, I don't see how much longer we can go or at least survive as a country with what Biden's doing in office. And it looks like they're trying to provoke a civil war. That's what's going on. Yeah, I'm going to make sure I stay home. The last thing I'm going to do is fight against my, my, the fellow citizens. Yeah, and the whole thing too is, you know, I mean, the Republicans are not any better either. You know, it's a, uh, uh, they got their twist too. You know, and, and uh, yeah, granted, right now on the front that mostly it's the Democrats who are grooming kids and uh, going after gun rights and free speech and all that, and then, you know, the Republicans, you got parts of the, you know, the rhinos and the Republicans are doing the same thing, but you know, a broader agenda. You know, so it's like two management teams. That's all it is: uh, right wing, left wing. Yeah, they belong to the same bird, two sides of the same coin. And uh, people forget about all the years that the Bushes destroyed this country. And when you look at all these people, man, um, the Bushes, Clintons, Obama, uh, Biden, all these people, like closest of friends. Yes. And they're all from opposing parties, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it makes no sense at all. Now, you know what I mean? I, I voted for Trump. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a, uh, on a Trump train, per se. You know what I mean? Because we know those things with his Operation Warp Speed, which I was against. Yeah. Uh, the Afghanistan uh, intervention and all this other stuff that's going on and the vaccine stuff, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. and I think he should have fired, you know, Dr. Fauci from day one 
and all these other criminals that are in those. But, you know, we're supposed to drain a swamp, but yet we still have the same corrupt CIA, the same corrupt FBI, the same corrupt uh, Department of Justice and everything. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm surprised. Um, you know, at first it seems that I, I, I heard someone saying this the other day. It, it probably was you, but it really hit home. When Biden first came into office, everybody, including myself, you know, said he's a laughing stock. He shouldn't be in there. But now it seems that people are more scared of Biden yep. than before. They're not taking him as a joke anymore. They're more yeah. threatened of him. So. Yeah, no, you know, the, the things are just ramping up because they, that, you get, like I said, Garen to push the Civil War. And the thing is, people on both sides are going to understand, like, uh, What's going to happen? You know, and it doesn't matter if uh, Trump gets back in either. What's going to happen is um, they want all of us to kill each other, like literally kill each other, so they can send that. Because right now they know, they know darn well, uh, if we were to unite right now, we would squash them like cockroaches. It wouldn't would even be a fight. You know what I mean? And it's just the amount of, uh, you know, 200 million Americans, uh, you know, adults joining forces, and just like, it, it wouldn't even be a fight. They know that. So what they want to do is divide us politically. Uh, spiritually and everything else, and keep us divided and killing each other. And uh, meanwhile, bringing you know these uh, communist groups in like uh, Antifa to stir up trouble. You know, I mean, these Antifa people, they, they, uh, you know, credit to Black Lives Matter, all right? Um, because I've seen a lot of the rallies where Black Lives Matter, they were peacefully protesting. And uh, Antifa would come in, they would bust up the buildings and um, spray paint BLM on the, uh, the wall. Then you had the Black Lives Matter screaming at them. Don't do that. They're going to blame us for it, you know. And, uh, and half these uh, Antifa people in some cities are cops dressed up in uh, the black yep. to instigate problems. I seen right in Boston where they um, busted up their own police car, then uh, pushed it into the street and put it on fire. And um, and uh, you can hear the, you know, some of the BLM people screaming that, you know, that we didn't do that. We, you know, they got it on video of two cops busting up their own car. Oh, you know? my goodness. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, of course, there's people in BLM that do stop trouble and do, you know, do all that, you know. But um, it's just like the, you know, the regular people in BLM, they, you know, they, they're brainwashed to think that, you know, whitey out there is <laughs> trying to take everything, you know. And uh, so, which is not the case, you know. And I've been to some of these rallies, and I had, you know, some great talks with some of the BLM people, but some of the other ones too were. Yeah, a little difficult to deal with. <laughs> uh, but the Antifa people, they don't want to talk to nobody. Those people are out there for one reason only is to stop trouble. No, the government for rock and fires, most of them. They're being led by uh, people in the government, uh, federal agents, police, and everything else. And uh, very disgusting. Now, uh, back in 2010, I think it was 2010, there was a World Trade Organization, WTO, um, or uh, some kind of a meeting in San Diego, I want to say. Uh, yeah, it was San Diego, California. And what happened was, uh, they had a bunch of um, people all dressed in black, like what the Antifa would look like today. And uh, they, would, they went in and ravaged all town, you know, destroyed downtown San Diego. The police were told to stand down, don't do nothing. And as soon as they got done, then they were told to come in and clean house. And at this time, uh, half the protesters left because they didn't want to get involved with the violence. And a shop owner is like a woman at Starbucks cleaning up the glass because they busted the window. Cops come in and whacked her with bully clubs and everything and they sprayed her. And innocent people had nothing to do with it, you know what I mean? And uh, they come to find out, um, you know, the hotel that these people stay in, I was about 40 of them, uh, the, the bill was flipped from the police department. Oh. And they had the same boots on as the police, you know what I mean? So these were police officers, and yet that's why the cops stood there. They stood right there as, a, you know, they were busting stuff up and did absolutely nothing. Oh. And when it left is when they came in and uh, took, you know, action, you know what I mean? And uh, so... Uh, we, we deal with the enemy from within, you know what I mean? And uh, then you got some cases where the cops are innocent, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's just crazy. It really is. And uh, they're doing this all to destroy this country. Absolutely. Like, who's the good guy now? They're making everybody look bad. Yep. That's exactly what they want. I'll tell you, I'm staying home as much as possible. Um, since, the, well, even before the lockdown, I pretty much live secluded and reclusive, so not much changed for me when COVID broke out, but uh, now more than ever, watching what's going on in the news, just uh, people seem very unpredictable, untrustworthy, panicky, and I'm better off staying at home. Yeah. 
you know, I live out in the boondocks, so the only thing I have to worry about is frisky deer and rabbits. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it's, it's crazy, though. I mean, you're better off just, like, uh, staying out of... Like, I stay out of the cities now. You know I've been a reporter and all that, but I've been involved so much in Rhode Island, so I have, like, a huge target on me. So, uh, certain events I can't go to because, uh, I mean, I know i got a target on me and everything, so... If I went to a BLM rally or a abortion rally or whatever. They'll set uh, you up. They'll set yeah. you up. Yep. Wow. They'll have a target on me, you know, certain people. So, I mean, I go to gun rights rallies and all that to defend our Second Amendment, but uh, any of the leftist rallies I can't, you know, go to no more because uh, war out my welcome that sort of speak. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's another concern um, with all these shootings. Um the program shooters and it seems like they're just breaking out one after the other after the next but the one thing that concerns me is mass media isn't really talking about it and I mean I'm an ex uh, super soldier I'm an MK Ultra survivor I survived all of it but to watch these things uh, these shootings break out in the news I just I want to cover my eyes mm. Yeah, now, even William Cooper, you know, former intelligence, uh, you know, back in the 80s, he blew the whistle on that. He said the CIA, they're going to use MK Ultra people and, uh, you know, sleeper cells and all that, and they're going to go shoot up schools to go after gun rights. And uh, sure enough, I mean, like, uh, we had, uh, I think it was that, uh, I forgot, uh, Columbine, that was a big one. Yep. And for a while, it was nothing, and all of a sudden, they just started spurring up weekly, you know, and, uh, like the new norm, you know, and uh, and they're doing this, and every time the the poor bodies are not even cold yet, and they're calling for uh, gun control. Jeez, <sighs> it's only gonna get worse. Angelique in the chat room said, "Yes, those are Soros's minions, getting paid to cause chaos and mayhem, and yep. the Soros DAs all across the country releasing these minions on a revolving door to keep them out, and about doing the bidding of the master. These are the foot soldiers of Satan." That's a pretty scary thing right there. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, for sure. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to get worse until they get their way. Then uh, if they get their way, you know, you know, magically all this will go away. But the crime will get worse, and, uh, you know, and then you won't be able to defend yourself. And so it's like, but the thing is, you, you know, you don't give up. I mean, you don't give, you know, give in to evil or negotiate for evil. Right, and, and, and not accept, uh, for me, um, I get attacked by the kingdom of darkness. It, it puts bad thoughts in my head, like thoughts of doubt, thoughts of fear, and then I feel yep. handicapped. And I, I go to Heavenly Abba and I ask him, what, what should I do or what would I do in that situation? And I guess the only thing we can all do is prepare. Yep. <clears throat> Here and, uh, you know, and, and the thing is, too, a lot of it's the blame is from the churches out there. And, uh, you know, I mean, it really is because uh, men, you know, Christian men would not put up with this crap. A hundred years ago, you know, maybe 50 years ago, but definitely a hundred years ago before. Uh, and these people, you know, these Antifa, you know, these yep. dissidents out there. The American people back then would have, you know, kicked the snot out of them, plain and simple. You know, I mean, they would have not put up with that. Uh, Christian men, you know, they would have got up and said, yeah, you're not going to do that in my city, no way in heck, you know, and so, then, you know, there's the churches today, because, uh, you know, the dispensationalism out there, teaching churches, oh, just, you know, we're not supposed to do nothing, we're supposed to shut up, do what the government tells us to do, uh, you know, and that goes to an extent, because they'll uh, misuse the book of Romans, you know, to, uh, oh, you know, obey your leaders, which, yeah, you're supposed to obey the authority, absolutely, but if that authority uh, goes to give it, you know, gets your conviction, and then you still stand up to it. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. You know what I mean? And uh, and we've seen a lot, you know, especially during the lockdowns, you know, them telling churches to shut down, and they all complied like a bunch of sheep. You know, it's a, <laughs> yep. Except the church in Canada, uh, that pastor there who got arrested a couple of times, which the courts ruled in his favor, thank God. But um, yeah, he oh, stood up God. and stood for his ground, you know? Yeah, I forget his name, but thank God the courts ruled in his favor. Yeah. That was a huge win. Yeah, so, Sorry. Yep. 
yeah, if we don't stand up and stand against these evil people and evil forces, if we don't stand up against them, it, it, that just gives them all the leeway to run over us. It's, it's not as scary to stand up and say, no, that's wrong. No, I'm not going to put up with it. I, I know it's scary to do that, but it's even worse to have to live under that evil person's rule because we didn't stand up to say no. Yep. Hmm. That's what happens. I mean, like in uh, the American Christians uh, become weak. They really have. I'm not not all of them, absolutely, but um, the majority of them have, and it's unfortunate. And that's why they get, you know, these people get in the way with the getting away with. You know, and, uh, they don't do nothing. And they have some abortion thing at the state house, and you you think, you know, all the churches would be there. To, you know, fight against that. Nope, not at all. Maybe a couple churches, the whole world churches. Yep. You know, but the mainstream churches, nope, nowhere to be found. They're told, to, don't get involved with any of that, just pray about it, and that's it. Yep. And, and then they manipulate the Bible to, you know, condition the people to make them a bunch of suckers, excuse the language, but, uh, and uh, a bunch of wimps, you know, sit there, don't do nothing. And then you got these churches that allow this feminization of men in, in the churches. Oh, I hate that. I, oh, I yeah. hate that. That really ticks me off. It's aggravating as a woman. Yeah. And it's not the worst when I see uh, guys out there acting like girls. You know I mean, like, uh, try to talk like a girl, feminine. Uh, I just, like, uh, the man inside of me just wants to smack him. You know what I mean? It's like, what, you know, you got a set of, you know what? <laughs> you know, no testosterone in these people at all. You know, and uh, then they have that disgusting. And the thing is, I, I, I really don't care if people take offense, but that disgusting rainbow flag, mm -hmm. what that is, is uh, why I find that disgusting for it, because people don't understand it. And these so-called Christians who have that set the churches, oh, you're going to pay a heavy price before the Lord. Because literally that flag, if people knew what that flag literally stood for, it, it's literally, you're, you're not only smacking God in the face, you're not only spitting God in the face, you're, you're kicking him in the face. And you know you're flipping him the bird. You're flipping the bird, spitting his face, smacking his face all at once. I know. Yeah, you know, because um, uh, it was Harry Hay, one of the founders. He was you know the birth of the LGBT, and mm -hmm. they chose the rainbow flag out of mockery of the rainbow. You know, what I mean that God made a covenant on the earth that He would never flood the earth again, and it was also to remind people why He flooded the earth. You know. You know um, you know, sexual corruption and all the right. you know, genetic mutation, all this other stuff. But, uh, and one of the reasons why was because, of, you know, homosexuality. So they took that, the symbol of God, a beautiful rainbow, and perverted it. And that's how the occult is. They take everything of God and uh, flip it upside down and add a perversion to it. You know what I mean? So they, you know, that, that disgusting rainbow that you see in that flag. Yeah. And it's just, again, you, you're spitting, smacking, and got in the face and fucking off that you're know, doing with that flag absolutely and it really hurts to actually see that because oh, yeah. now i mean i i finally it's been seven years and it's a process but getting to know him he is so awesome amazing he's got a great sense of humor yes he is on the throne and we should always praise and glorify him but whenever I have a tough time, instead of criticizing me and scrutinizing me, he actually comes to help me. And I, I just, he's so wonderful. And also about that rainbow, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> I know the rainbow is his promise not to flood the world, but doesn't he also have a rainbow, uh, an emerald rainbow around his throne too? Oh yeah, the what's that called? Um, the Northern Lights, I think they're called, or whatever. Yeah, I, forgive me, I'm bad with uh, recalling things, but as as a servant and child of God, it really pains me to see when he, when man takes something of his, things of heaven, and inverts it and perverts it <clears throat> into something they want it to be. It really hurts to see that. I don't think they realize how much they're hurting God with their actions. Yeah. The, the, he's, they're bringing him to anger. Yeah, that, that's exactly what they're doing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, the, these churches out there. And uh, the reason why I'm uh, hitting the churches here because these people should know better. You know, these leaders and uh, these people are snakes. 
these people uh, split tongue liars and behind the pulpit. Yep. And uh, it just like irritates the heck out of me. Uh, same thing with David Carrico, um, John Wall, and John Pound. It's like we all, you know, when when it comes to stuff, it just irritates us to no end. You know what I mean? It puts that uh, fire in your belly because these people mislead millions and millions of people in this country you know, alone, you know? And that's standing there behind the pulpit allowing um, this gay stuff to be in the churches, to do these satanic uh, pagan holidays, Easter, Christmas. Oh, that nothing kills me. Just. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that they're, they're sitting there worshiping idols, and uh, you know, it, it's just horrendous. It really is, and uh, and the, the masses have no idea they think they're serving God. You know, that's the sad part about it. Yep, the the church, like in the Bible, we get called out of the church because it's apostate. Heavenly Abba sends out His deception, and many people fall. But that really gets me. The church. They'll put effort into dragging a Christmas tree into their building in December. They'll put effort into having trunk or treat, but they never take on issues that really need to be addressed in the world. Um, and even now, even though I've had seven years turning my life around with Heavenly Abba, still now I, real, I realize how corrupt I was and how out of whack my lifestyle used to be. Um, in every facet, paganism had creeped in, and I allowed it. So, it, just but when it comes to the church, it's it's really frustrating because they're not active. My church here in New Jersey, they're not even a 501c3. But when COVID broke out, they locked down just like the rest of them. And oh boy, that really ticked me off. <laughs> You know, they had so much, they had, they prided themselves on not being a 501c3, but when it came down to it, they acted just like one. I, I can't understand. Well, yeah. They act like just one, and they just conform to tyranny, because uh, even the Constitution, right, the Bill of Rights, the very first thing the Bill of Rights address is religion, the freedom of religion, and at the time... 99% people in this country were uh, like a Judeo-Christian Puritan type of people. There was no Catholics here. There wasn't the 40,000 different denominations of Christian. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, some of the founding fathers were cultists, some were deists, and some were Christian, you know. But um, primarily, the people in this country went off the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you know what I mean, plain and simple. So the freedom of religion was started right here in Rhode Island. Um, Roger Williams, the founder of Rhode Island, uh, he named the city Providence, you know, that's where I was born, too. It means in God's care, that was his capital. And uh, so basically told all the people, hey, you can come to Rhode Island uh, to be free from pure, uh, per, um, persecution from the British. Because they tried to jam the Church of England down their throat and everything. And Roger Williams uh, bought the plan from the natives to make it um, a safe haven uh, for, um, you know, Christians and Puritans to come and uh, live in peace, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, freedom of religion was, uh, the First Amendment was established off that. And uh, James Madison, uh, yeah, the, People say he was a Freemasonry, but the thing is, uh, James Madison was a very true believer in, um, in religion, you know, in the, the Bible, you know. That's why the very first thing, when you look at the uh, Bill of Rights, the very first thing they address is religion, which is, you know, at the time, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It wasn't, you know, Catholics or nothing, you know. So, um, and he right away said that and not even Congress has the authority to make them do anything, you know what I mean? And uh, so the church is locking down, obeying Congress and the government or the state. It's unconstitutional. You know what I mean? And they have, you know, the, they, nobody has the authority to override the First Amendment. You know, the first ten, uh, first ten bill of rights, uh, people say, well, there are amendments that could be, you know, added to or taken away. No, uh, the first ten amendments are called the Bill of Rights. They're independent of government. That's what James Madison said. In other words, government could never, ever, ever come in and override them. Because it gives power to the people, and if they, you know, I mean, it's a, it, it was like rules basically set that you know, if you're in a prison, right, the warden he runs the prison, you know, what I mean, and yeah. we're the warden, you know, and um, the government is the, you know, prisoners in this case, you know, <laughs> and the prisoners could never out, you know, overrule the, the warden's laws, you know. So uh, that's why the ten amendment, first ten amendments of the Bill of Rights are set in stone, plain and simple, and uh, people. Don't understand that, you know. I mean, and so they can manipulate things, and you get these uh, half-wit lawyers out there who yeah. uh, use their credentials to, you know, throw the constitutional rights around. When you, I mean, you don't have to do that. You know, you don't need to be a lawyer to read the Constitution. You know, 
Yeah. Of course, they, these churches are a bunch of cowards today. They really are. They are. They are. That's uh, that's why I, I try to join you online because uh, at least I can get my holy Bible studies in. I can yeah. keep sharp on the spiritual warfare, but also, Dan, I rely on you for news. If I don't turn into tune, tune into you, I really don't know what's going on out in the world. <laughs> But you're one of the few people out there giving the news, and also you're on the East Coast. I'm also in New Jersey, so it, it's good for me to know what's going on, um, you know, out in the world and definitely around here. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why it's important uh, because I get people say, well, why are, you just co- why are you covering the news? Just cover, you know, biblical stuff and all that. But the thing is, uh, God says in Ephesians 5 to know your enemy and expose him. And simple, and uh, so if we're not if you, people don't know what the enemy's doing, they're gonna fall for it. You know what I mean? Yes. There's so many people out there. Go well, these churches today. They say, oh, I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff going out there. Or oh, oh, I'm just gonna just concentrate in the scripture, which is great. You, number one thing is concentrate in the scripture. But the thing is, you need to know what's going on out there because how many, how many children uh, going to school every week? You know, they go to Sunday school, whatever the case, but they'll go to school every week, learn evolution learn these satanic doctrines and the parents have no clue about them. Yep. You know what I mean? So if it wasn't for people like us out there who get this news out there, uh, expose these uh, evil deeds and all that, you know, Christians themselves wouldn't know about this stuff because uh, a lot of churches, they accept Freemasonry. A lot of pastors are Freemasons. We know about that. You know what I mean? There's nothing <laughs> biblical about Freemasonry. You know, it's an occult. Plain and simple. Yeah. You know? and, um, and not speaking for the lower levels, the, you know, the you know first three degrees is called the Blue Lodge. And it's a majority Christian. You have to believe in something, some kind of deity, uh, but they present to be of God. Then when you get to the fourth degree and uh, the Blue Lodge, Red Lodge, I'm sorry, uh, the fourth degree and up, I mean, you learn it's not, it's not about God, it's not about about Jesus, you know what I mean? It's a Luciferian cult, plain and mm-hmm. simple. Mm-hmm. And their, their, their religion is Kabbalah, you know, at the very top. And uh, very evil stuff. And uh, but, you know, if we didn't go out, people like us didn't go out there and expose these deeds of evil, these Christians and people in general would have no idea uh, what's going on because they don't want to be bothered. You know, and the thing is still the average person out there, too, that, you know, they go to work. I work a full-time job, too. So uh, you go to work and they listen to maybe a little news on the radio and catch it in the newspaper or at the other night on the TV. That's all. You know what I mean? And so yeah. whatever they they hear, they're like, yeah, whatever, that's it. But, um, you know, like, when I do the news, I scout the news, like, from all over the world. And, you know, show the agenda with that push in and try to read through the lines and pull out all the BS and show the people the, the meat and potatoes and also the agenda behind it, you know? Yep. Yep. They, they need that. I know. I do. Um, I just had a question and it slipped out of my mind. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um uh, yeah, I, the church is definitely weak. Um, uh, I remember when I used to go to <clears throat> my church about four, four or five years ago. Um, you know, I had talked to them, and um, we had agreed that it would be a good idea if I could address the congregation and give some of my testimony and yeah. talk about disassociative identity disorder and MK Ultra programming. And um, I, I guess it, it wasn't a good idea because in the long run, um, my testimony, I felt like they kind of buried it and pushed it away because it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty hard testimony to get through. But um, they, they were all too happy to um, bring up like a football player and, and ask about his life and about professional football and how he got there and how God led him there and what God's doing in his life. And I thought that was a nice story, but the problem was is he was already a successful football player. I really wasn't connecting the two whatsoever. Um, but my church, I, I ended up not going anymore. Um, especially too, besides the paganism that's creeped in, the false doctrine and uh, the man's traditions like the doctrine of the rapture. Um, I remember bringing some of my drawings in of the dream, like Heavenly Abba gives me dreams and I had met, I had um, 
I try to make drawings of the dreams he gives me and I brought them into my church to show them and I was trying to explain the dreams and they kept cutting me off and saying oh no no this is the rapture this is what it means and they just did not listen whatsoever so I, I can't imagine the church nowadays even they just don't call out evil and they're not very much involved whatsoever the last uh yeah, well, it was the last church, the one before that, I, when I lived in Massachusetts, when I was going there, and I started reaching a lot of people, because after the service, I would start talking to people, and I would have like five, six people, and seven people sitting there listening to me, and I was talking about different things, you know, and uh, the elders didn't like that too much, so uh, they're like, oh, yeah, you don't, don't, you, don't worry about any of that, we're not going to be here for all that. I'm like, uh, that's not what the Bible says, you know. And um, so, yeah. it, it, you know, then we get to the holiday stuff and, you know, I was trying to tell the pastor and all that about Easter and all that. He goes, yeah, but we want to cancel everything because uh, one Easter they had, um, I think it was Friday they had a concert, Saturday, uh, Easter egg hunt, and Sunday was the dinner. You know, three-day event, whatever the case, at the church. And uh, he goes, what do you want me to cancel everything? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like how you know. It's like you're going to mislead people. Uh, so you know what an abomination is to have an Easter egg hunt at the church, and especially a Christmas tree up on the altar? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> it's like, I say it's not even, um, yeah, I can't even compare it to anything, really. But, I mean, uh, that's yeah. such an abomination. But, uh, but yeah, these churches, like, um, they cut you off, too, like you said. Oh, no, no, no. You know, that you know things are different now and all that stuff. And they, they make excuses for everything. And uh, thank the father that yeah. he's always giving me answers to combat these people. You know what I mean? And uh, always have an answer to come back with, you know, from the scripture. You know, when we get to the Sunday worship, it was like, no, it's actually Saturday, the seventh day, you know. And uh, then they're like, oh, the times are changed. And it's like, what does the scripture say? The times will change, but his word will never, you know? Yeah. changes, you know? And, yeah. Or the worst is when they say, well, we know Jesus's birthday isn't December 25th, but we're still going to celebrate it now. Like, oh, yeah, he goes a hawk. Yeah, I learned Heavenly Abba disciplined me when it came to that. I am not to push orders up the ladder. The commands go from him down the ladder to me. They never go up. So I learned that the hard way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the excuses come out of the woodwork. Oh, he, he knows my heart. What does that even mean? Yeah, it's like, I'm not questioning your heart. I'm telling you your yep. worship on a pagan holiday. You know what I mean? And uh, all that. It's yep. nothing to do with you. Well, we're taking this day back to Jesus. First of all, it was never his day in the first place. Yep. Second of all, he told you to stay the heck away from these things in the scripture. So now it's your excuse. You know what I mean? And, uh, oh, you're not supposed to judge people. I'm like, yeah, you are. Just to judge righteously. But don't judge, you know, if you got stole, um a plank in your writing that you know try to remove a piece of sawdust on somebody else's you know but um, it says we can judge righteously and i'm not judging you i'm telling you what's going on is evil what you do is between you and god not me but this holiday stuff and all that yeah. is evil plain and simple so they come out and, and like i learned to combat everything they throw at me the pastors and everything else so i learned to combat everything and when you shut them down like they look dumb on them because they never come across people they'll come across people once in a while with um uh, that question things, and yeah. right away they hit them, you know, bang, 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 and they shut the person down. But yeah. when they come across some people that know better, they don't like that. They look like deer in the headlights, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's pretty. Yeah. I, I don't know what the future holds as far as the church is concerned because I just see a bunch of empty buildings and yep. on every street corner, and what's the sense of that? There is no point. Um, I don't know if it was on one of the Illuminati playing cards or what it was, but a couple of years ago, um, I was talking with someone or we were looking at the Illuminati playing cards, and I thought there was one where people wind up burning churches down across America. I don't know... Uh, it's been a long time since I even thought of that. It could have had to have, it could have had to do with the Black Awakening, the book that Rusta Star wrote. But yeah. um, I thought there was uh, in the future. I thought I heard a prophecy or a rumor that 
the general public would wind up turning around to burn all the churches down because they haven't done anything and they're nowhere to be found pretty much. I don't know if yeah. that's true, but. Well, I mean, they, they are attacking churches, you know, especially the fundamental churches. That's why the churches are throwing up these rainbow flags to, you know, be politically correct. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's disgusting. I'd rather have my church burned down if I had a church. I'd rather have it burned down than hang one of those disgusting trash bag flags up there. I can't, I mean, that thing makes me want to keep that darn flag. Exactly. And the fact that now the LGBTQ, um, they want to go in schools and teach our kids and have us no part of it. And the schools back that up. Uh, that That's the worst thing to do to our kids. That steals their innocence. And at that age, it, they can't understand it. It rewires their brain. It's The kids should be left alone to just grow up normally. Um, they're not interested in all this sexuality stuff. These kids are into still playing with toys, and I think we should embrace that. You know, yeah. the world is in such a hurry to have these kids grow up. It, it just turns into a mess. They're not... No. Some places to give kids vasectomies and that's wow. that's crazy. Or giving these little kids uh, hormones. The, yep. I I just puberty blockers and all kinds of things. And that's crazy. I hear in Hollywood that that's a lot. What these actors and actresses do to their own children is they put them through that and give them hormones right. so their voice doesn't change. And uh, that's beyond me. That's beyond me. And again, the churches are supposed to be on the front lines of the stuff. And, uh, you know, they, they fold like a house of cards, you know, and sick and, Yeah. But, you know, they've got to be held accountable. The, the leaders of these churches, they're going to be held accountable. Worse than, you know, the worst of people that, you know, that are going to suffer, that were misled by them, they're going to suffer 10 times worse. They're going to pay the penalty of all the people they misled. Absolutely. My church, uh, my face to face one, we have 52 weeks in a year. They would talk about Revelation for one month. So out of 52 weeks, they would preach about Revelation three to four weeks of that time. I, I would have thought that he would have, our pastor would have changed it the other way and had 48, 49 sermons of talking about Revelation and getting us prepared so we don't succumb to the spirit of fear. Oh, yeah, they want everybody to think, uh, like David Carrico says, Marty McFly with the rapture bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I love now yeah, you see TV. Marty with the rapture bus is going to come and save us. And... <laughs> right. I used to defend the pre-tribulation rapture, too, and uh, I read Matthew 24. I'm like, hold on a second. And because it says immediately after the tribulation, after, and I'm like, Wait a minute. And then uh, when I got yep. to the Second Corinthians, chapter two, it almost is the same thing. Yeah, the, because we already told we're not going to be, be here for the mark of the beast or the Antichrist. And yeah. um, Second uh, Thessalonians ch chapter two is talking about before Jesus comes, the Antichrist comes first. And now the churches teach the other way around. I'm like, hold on. And I asked them, well, oh, you you read it out of context. I'm like, how am I reading out of context? I read the whole chapter. <laughs> You, you just give me single verses. And that's a strategic battle with these churches, what they do. And um, I, I, I caught them doing this, you know what I mean? And uh, so what they'll do is, uh, well, if you go to um, this verse and that verse and that verse to try to defend the, the uh, stand, mm -hmm. I'm like, hold on a second. Like, why are you bouncing all over the Bible like that? Oh, uh, that, you know, the Bible says, no, no, no. It's like, no, let's go to the context. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and if you read, the, you know, they give me something in Matthew 24. It's like, no, read in this context. Because later it says after the tribulation. Yep. And it says um, the Antichrist comes first in Second Thessalonians 2, if you read it in this context. So what they'll do is like you go to a church, right? And they have what they call a, a church constitution. This is a stance they believe and everything else and all that. And it's backed by a constitution they created or them or the organization they belong to. Uh, so what they do is they'll string together uh, 100, 200 verses. Like, and the thing is, like, uh, so the average person that doesn't know the Bible, like, well, what does it say in the Bible that, um, you know, once saved, always saved, right? So they'll string together the first few verses are going to sound something like that. 
and you know, of course, taken out of context. Yep. So they know darn well that 99% percent people, 99.9% percent people, are not going to go through all those Bible verses. Yep. And when you're reading every, every one of those verses in the context, it has nothing at all to do with what they're talking about. Nothing. And if you take the verse by itself, maybe you could find a verse yeah. that would sound like, somewhat sound like what they're talking about, but people don't know how to take these things in context. Is that just a single verse? So it's like basically a verse, right? If you give ten different people one Bible verse, you're gonna have nine, ten different interpretations. Yep. And if you give um, those, you know, ten people the Bible verse in its context, and the context could be the, the paragraph or the chapter or maybe two chapters. You know what I mean? So if you give the verse in its context, you're gonna have all ten people with the same conclusion because you don't need to interpret it. So the churches they give single verses, you know, hop frog hopping all over the Bible, <laughs> and so by the time you get to the third, fourth verse, and then like you know what, I guess the Bible does say I'm not, I, I believe it, you know what I mean? Because they don't know how to challenge it, right? You know, and all they yeah. see is a bunch of Bible verses all the way down the page, and uh, yeah, all right, I'm done with this. <laughs> uh, they're right, you know what I mean? And um, that's what to me, you know, and um, try to defend pre trip pre-tribulation rapture and all that stuff. And they bring up Jacob's trouble. It has nothing to do with the rapture. And I, <laughs> yeah, for years, I, that's what we used to defend the pre-tribulation rapture, the Jacob's trouble. But it has nothing to do with <laughs> the rapture. You know? And, uh, yeah, because Jesus says, uh, the man of perdition will be revealed first, the antichrist, you know? Yes. And then he comes after, you know what I mean? So what's going to happen is when this fake antichrist comes, you know, I mean, the, you know, the fake Christ, which is the Antichrist, a lot of people are probably going to turn to him thinking he's the Savior. And remember, I say he comes to the clouds, not a temple. You know, and that's where they, oh, we got to support Israel. we got to kiss no. Israel's butt. No. God's not talking about the country. It's God's Israel. It's the spiritual Israel. Yes. You know, it's not the actual country where the Rothschild is funded. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So everybody's like, you know, waiting for this uh, glorious third temple. And uh, all the, you know, the mainstream religions are saying that because they... Israel announced uh, the building of their temple. I heard so, that. Oh, like up and, oh, yes, it's great. This is so awesome. This is Bible prophecy and all that. It is prophecy, but the thing is, this temple is not, that's not the temple God was talking about. The temple is us, the people, you know? Yes. That third temple is going to be where the Antichrist comes. Because even Jesus says in Matthew 24, if they say, I'm in the desert, believe it not, or I'm in a cave or whatever the case, but in the end, the desert's where the temple's going to be, kind of in Israel, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, people are going to say he's the Christ, he's the, the Messiah, you know, and uh, people are going to believe it. Yeah. And Jesus said, don't believe it. And he goes, when I come, it's going to be like, uh, you know, in the roundabout way, it's going to be a grand Hollywood entrance. He says, when I come, it's going to be like uh, lightning flashing from the east to the west. You know what I mean? Like, the, the whole world's going to see, every eye's going to see it. Uh, he's going to come through the clouds. He's not coming out of a temple, he's not coming out of a, a rock or right. uh, being born in the flesh again. No, he's coming. From the sky, literally, you know what I mean? And, uh, and the thing is, too, with the Bible, uh, what these people do, is uh, if I'm all over the place, you stop me. No, not at all. I agree with you. Yeah, the Bible does say he's going to descend from heaven the same way he ascended. So you're... Go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... Western Gate, I think it is, right? So, uh, stepping on Mount Olives and coming to the Western Gate, I believe. Uh, the Eastern Gate, I forgot. Uh, One... Yeah, but the, the Muslims actually uh, cemented that up, the gate. But, you know, Jesus is going to bust right through it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they, they cemented that up. They uh, blocked the gateway. You know what I mean? And, uh, I think it's the Eastern Gate. Uh, they blocked the gateway because that's where the Temple Mount is, I think, now. So um, they they blocked it up, and but that's not going to stop Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's coming from the clouds, and he's stepping on Mount of Olives. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Gateway that's blocked is not going to stop him, you know. And, uh, so yeah, he's coming through the clouds. And here's the thing too: that, um, people, he gives a sign that says um, the stars will fall from heaven, the heavens will be yep. shaken, the sun and moon will lose its light. Now, this is uh, today's typical Christian out there. Um, you know, that's the, you know, a little ridiculous to believe because I, that's more figuratively speaking. The stars are not not going to actually fall from heaven because if they did, it would destroy the earth and all that. It's like, hold on a second. Because the thing is, the world, astronomy, astronomy and all that, the world they believe to be, okay, you find out figuratively. But if you knew biblical cosmology, the way the Bible talks about the universe, well, the 
the firmament, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not figurative, it's literally. You know what I mean? The stars are literally going to fall. The sun moves, literally going to lose his light. He's literally going to yeah. come through the clouds. He's literally going to, like, stomp down on the Mount of Olives, you know what I mean? And uh, he's literally going to do this, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they try to say this uh, figuratively, you know what I mean? And they try, uh, you know, he's not, he's going to come, but not that way. You know, it's just, a, you know, figuratively speaking. No, he's literally coming that way, you know? Yes. And, uh, because they don't have the, um, the biblical cosmology view, you know? The way a lot of people call the flat earth thing, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the biblical cosmology says the earth was first, then the sun, moon, and stars were created on day four. Now, if you notice everything in the science of the world today, they, they teach the exact opposite. And yeah. you notice that it's not a coincidence that everything they teach in school is exactly opposite from what the Bible says. Yep. So it was a big bang, and the universe was created, and uh, our galaxy, then our solar system, then our sun, then, you know, the earth formed and all that. When the yeah. Bible says it's the other way around. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The earth was the first, and it's in the firm, in between, it was in waters. Yes. And he separated two waters from this Genesis, uh, chapter one. He separated the waters from the waters, created the firmament. And on the fourth day, because the thing is that they get to see, well, let there be light, you know, automatically they think that was the creation of the sun. No, that was Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, the Holy Spirit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was the way of the earth. And then later he created the sun and moon to, you know, the rule of the day and night, you know. And uh, the other thing, too, a lot of Christians out there that think Jesus just came into accept, uh, existence through Mary. Jesus was here before the earth was. Yes. He manifested in the flesh. That's all he did. He was already here. He just manifested in the flesh to be in the world. Now. Right. And, uh, since, yeah, right. Since the foundations of the earth. Yep. Yep. So when you look at the Bible from that point of view, I mean, the cool thing about it is one thing all the ancient cultures believe, and it, it, it got actually a few things that match the Bible. All the ancient cultures, even the ancient texts like the Book of Enoch, Jubilees, Jasher, uh, Haruk, uh, all these books, right? All of them in all the ancient cultures, hundreds of ancient cultures all around the world, all have the same exact count of creation, what the world looks like, and uh, the giants, the flood, and all, all the stuff, the Nephilim around the earth. And, uh, the Greeks thought they were gods, you know, and, uh, with the Greek mythology. Yeah. They all have the same account. They all have different names for some of these things, but it's the same exact account, you know? Yep. So the thing is, like today's so-called science, right? And I tell these people, so we're supposed to not believe thousands and thousands of years of human history. Uh, <laughs> all this, and These guys are more intelligent than we're. That's why uh, they tell you in school, oh, uh, we were a primitive people back then. Yeah. Today we're more smarter and everything. That's not even true at all. Those people, large people, they're bigger, stronger, faster, smarter than we ever were in this day and age, you know? Yes. And it only appears to be smart because we've got computers and all that, but we're not, you know what I mean? And uh, so they get that mindset, so they can't understand. And the thing is that if you look at some of this ancient, ancient astronomy, they charted the dark side of the moon. Nobody's ever seen the dark side of the moon. How would they have that information? How would they have the information that not even NASA has yet? You know, and, uh, right. because they worked with these fallen angels and, um, the, you know, the uh, ancient cultures and all that. They were given this knowledge by the fallen angels and all that. And, uh, you know, even yeah. all, you know, or the you know, the, you know, God's angels, whatever the case. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, the, you know, the real seven sacred sciences that God taught Adam, you know, to give to Seth and uh, Cain. But of course, Cain and his bloodline, they um, they bastardized that with fallen angels. Yes. Yep. So like, uh, it's all it's all distorted today, and uh, the the church is out there. It's uh, it's just despicable. And uh, if the churches wanted two more things, we wouldn't be this mess in this country. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And getting back to the church, I could go on with you all day about this because I do on my own YouTube channel. The the one thing I dislike um, is how it seems like the the church is of a mentality. Oh well, I'm saved, so I can get out of jail free. Oh Holly, it's okay if I believe in the preacher of rapture. If I'm wrong, then it'll happen in the middle. Oh, Holly, if it doesn't happen in the middle, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to love God, and it's okay if I don't get it right. I'm saved. He'll forgive me. Now, I used to have that. Uh, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of having that in my own life, and, and Abba had to show me where I was going wrong, and I repent. But I, I've come into contact with Christians that think that the woes in the Bible don't apply to them because they're saved, like the one at the end. Thou shalt not add anything to the Bible, or Abba will add the plagues to us. And if we subtract anything, then Abba will subtract from us 
our position or inheritance with him. I forget how the Bible specifically words it, but <clears throat> I've met Christians that seem to come across, and I used to sadly have the same mentality where, well, I'm saved, so it's okay if I don't have it right because I'm automatically forgiven, and it doesn't matter if I get it right. And that's a really backslid attitude, I believe, to have. Yeah. Um, and and it, since Yeshua is the truth, if he's the truth, then we should not be believing in false doctrine. He's the truth. He's not false doctrine. So I think all of this really matters and pl plays a big part when it comes to our relationship with God. Um, Heavenly Abba, I believe, pointed out to me that he expects me to get my doctrine right and uh, not misunderstand any of this because if I do, then the demons have tricked me and they've gotten the upper hand. So. Yep. Exactly. And that's what these uh, churches do. You know? mm -hmm. And they... Uh, yeah, they just, I mean, there's just so much in my head. <laughs> you know, you know all these churches do this stuff and, um, you know, they just mislead people and uh, they got excuses for everything. Yep. Yeah, we're not going to be here for this or, uh, you know, that, you know, he knows my heart and all that stuff. And uh, when you talk about the rapture there and, you know, if I got it wrong or right, whatever the case, and, uh, yeah, you need to get it right. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. we're not, well, none of us are going to be 100% absolutely, but that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit um, is our teacher, you know what I mean? He's our, um, our comforter because Jesus uh, talked about when he was leaving, okay, because uh, um, the disciples said, who's going to be our comforter? And he goes, the Father will send you another comforter. And that was the Holy Spirit. Now, the um, false religions will use that. That verse, I forgot it was Matthew 6, I think, something like that. But uh, um, they'll use, oh, this is the proof uh, that he's talking about Muhammad or, um, you know, Joseph Smith or something like that from the Mormons or Islam or whatever religion. No, let's say he's talking about the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? The Holy Spirit is a, is a comforter. And uh, Charles Spurgeon, uh, in his book, uh, Holy Power of the Holy Spirit, uh, he talks about that, uh, about the religions out there. You know what I mean? He goes, like, when Jesus was leaving, he didn't tell people to go to the Church of Rome or go to an altar or a church, or go seek a pope, or whatever the case. Uh, he didn't say any of that. He said he's going to send you another comforter, another teacher. That's the Holy Spirit, you know? Right. So, like, which goes into um, the... This really drives me up a wall. Is when you get these so-called Bible scholars who brag about their credentials. <laughs> I got a degree in eschatology, theology, uh, biblical studies, and... Uh, uh, Harvard University, MIT, whatever the case, and they brag about it, right? And they're ordained by ministries and all that, and uh, you know their authors and all that, and they think they are the cats me out when it comes to the Bible. Yeah, you know, and then, then when you hear them talk, you like you laugh because you, when you learn the Bible with the Holy Spirit, it's like you don't need another teacher. You know, what I mean, and I tell this is what goes up the rear ends all the time, and I tell them right out. It's like there's not a university, college, um, Bible academy, or um, uh, uh, a church in the world, or a professor, or anything like that could teach you the word of God better than the Holy Spirit can. Say you know, plain and simple. You know, yeah, that, you know, homeless guy in the corner that reads his Bible every day and prays the Holy Spirit for help, he knows that Bible better than that person who spent eight years in uh, uh, Harvard University. <laughs> yeah. And because the Holy Spirit taught him, he didn't need, you know, God's people don't need degrees. You know, you don't need uh, to be ordained by a uh, ministry or ordained by uh, mankind. Right. God's the only one that could ordain people. You know, look at the disciples. They were fishermen. They, you know, some of these guys barely knew how to write their name. You know what I mean? And he made them teachers of the word. You know what I mean? Look at all his prophets, too. Look at Moses. Like, Moses, like, I can't even speak right. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know like, he didn't use people that had uh, tons of degrees and all this stuff uh, for that kind of stuff. No. He used people that you would never expect. Like Paul, for example, you know. Yeah, he used to go around killing followers of Jesus. You know, then he turned him into a, one of the strongest defenders of the faith. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so that's what God does. And, but today's society think, oh, oh, yeah, we're not going to listen to you unless you have uh, an official uh, degree or some kind of ordainship or, from, or discipleship. And the other thing, too, man, this really yeah. ticks me off into this stuff. Yeah. Well, these churches, right? Um, 
my friend Jonathan, when he was in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, he wanted to be baptized, right? So I told him we can back up here to Rhode Island because we baptized for you, right? So he, he wasn't coming up. He, it took him a while to move back to Rhode Island. But anyway, he met up with these people in this church, right? And, they, and he told him, yeah, he wants to be baptized. And they're like, oh, yeah, come on to the church, brother, right? So they told him he had to go through classes first. Yeah. Uh, he had to be discipled by them. Then after that, they had to get get together and vote to see if you're a true believer or not before they uh, oh, baptize. Oh, my goodness. And oh. he's like, um, you know, trying to do this stuff. And then I, when he told me he was doing this stuff, I'm like, hold on a second. And, I, and he was with these people. And it's like, listen, it's like, tell them right out right now. John the Baptist, did he vet people before he baptized them? Oh, my goodness. No. no. He didn't even know the person's name. It's like somebody comes out of the woodwork and wants to be baptized. You do. Well, you, still, you know, they just do that because they want to make sure you're serious. But the thing is, who's going to fake that? Who's going to waste that time to go get baptized? And then if they do waste the time, it's nothing to do with you or the church. It's a personal thing between you and the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like, uh, who's going to waste the time to do that? You know, right. and it's believe, you know, I'm plain and simple. And it's like, and they, you know, nobody should be vetting you or them deciding, the church elders deciding if you're, you know, qualified or not to be baptized. John the Baptist, I mean, if a person came out of the woods, I didn't even know the guy's name. Come on over, brother, baptize the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Yeshua yeah. Messiah, you know. And um, he didn't sit there, oh, hold on, did you go through... Um, uh, these classes for us, did you get discipled by these people? And no, no, no such thing, you know. And uh, that's you know, on IEC TV, that's what we do. Like, anybody that wants to come to be baptized, you're welcome, you know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. My church, they only do baptisms one day a year. And I thought to myself, I should have said it, but I'm, I'm learning to have backbone. I should have responded, so you only get people saved one day out of 365, or yeah, 365 days a year, you only get people saved one day and do baptisms one day. But yeah. I would have that baptism tub filled up every single morning, ready to go, <laughs> you yeah. know, just in case. Yeah, if I had a, you know, ministry of church, whatever, and, uh, you know, we're doing a service, and it wasn't even planned. So he says, I want to be baptized. I would, I would like, guys were staying like a half hour later until when the people go fill up the tub. Yeah, we're doing the baptism, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or the Absolutely. Okay. Right then and there, you seize the opportunity. That's the best way. <laughs> yep. Oh and I, you know, the, the, these things that, you know, just drives me up a wall. And, uh, and it just like, it lights that fire inside my gut, you know what I mean? And uh, then you got these people out there that distort the scripture. Yes. Uh, they call them uh, the preterist people, preterism. Mm -hmm. They believe that Jesus came back in 70 AD, the first century. Oh, I've heard yeah. of that. So, so, yep, and I'm like, you you guys have, it, it makes no biblical sense at all. There's no historical or biblical water to hold proof of that. Because, like, you know, it was, you know, we count the seven year tribulation, whatever you want to count it, right? Thousand year millennium. So, so by now, uh, 70 AD, it actually got to 1070 AD. We be there would be no more evil because the Bible says that all evil is going to be banished. You know what I mean? Yeah. No more sorrow, no more death. Why is there an antichrist system being set up right now? Exactly. And they get into these questions. You know what I mean? And uh, and they, yeah, again, they believe that Jesus came back in 70 AD. And all all the stuff in Revelation was fulfilled. <sighs> I've heard that too, and no, it has not. And I simply went before Abba and said, "What do you think? Uh, did you return? Did I miss something?" And he flat yeah. out said no. Yep. So. And they misused Matthew 24 uh, when they said, um, what's that verse here? Yeah. Matthew 24, that uh, they misuse it. They take that one verse, but they don't use it in its context. Cherry pickers. When it says, um, I forgot what verse is that. It's Matthew 24. But anyway, they uh, misused the verse, uh, plain and simple. Instead of taking it in its context, the show, and, and because Jesus says in those days, he goes right. Well, that's right there that uh, Jesus said uh, he's talking to the disciples and meant that time. But and it's like, well, if you read the verse after, he said in those days, referring to a future. Because if I was talking to you, if I was talking right now, right, and I said 
this is going to happen now, I'll be in your days or these days, right? Yes. I wouldn't say those days. Those days is referring to a future event to come. Exactly. You know? And he said it several times in Matthew 24, those days. Not these days or your days, those days. That's a future uh, tent, you know, future uh, thing to come. You know what I mean? And we yeah. can clearly see, uh, obviously we can look up at the sky right now. If you get a clear sky, you can see the stars in the heavens. You can see the sun and moon. And yeah, they haven't fell. They haven't lost their light. Yeah, you can see the heavens weren't shaken up yet. You you could definitely see we're not in the new heaven and new earth right now. I mean, if we were, we wouldn't be here talking on the uh, radio <laughs> trying to wake people up. And we'd be living in bliss and peace. You know what I mean? And uh, never Say dying enough of that. You know what I mean? Then you got these uh, Sethite theory people, right? They, um, the Genesis 6. They're like, oh, it's impossible for, uh, it's, again, it's called the Sethite theory. Okay. They they don't think it's possible for angels to have sex with women uh, <laughs> to create an offspring called the Nephilim, the giants and all that, the men of renown. And they think it was just a bloodline of Seth that, you know, something happened, but it, the angels didn't do it. And so, again, it's the mainstream church is trying to dismiss the information where you could actually find records of these giants all over the world. You know what I mean? They got even our mainstream newspapers uh, recording us in the uh, 1800s, early 1900s, and they stopped doing it because uh, the Smithsonian and all that told these people to stop covering the stuff. You know, the mainstream, yeah. media, excuse me, the mainstream media. Yeah. And when they find them, uh, not just a bone into it, they found full skeletons, uh, 11 feet tall, 12 feet tall, 16 feet tall, two rows of keys, six fingers on each hand. Uh, six uh, f- uh, toes on each foot, and uh, even the ancients talked about them. You know, I mean, the Amer- ancient Native Americans as well. They called them the Star People. You know, and when yeah. they held their hand up to say hi, to say how, they weren't counting their. F- you know, what I mean, they counted the fingers. They weren't saying hi to them. They were counting the fingers because yeah. they had a fear of these uh, giants. You know, yeah, and uh, six fingers and all that stuff. And uh, so they don't want to tell people this stuff. You know, what I mean, so they come up with this uh, idiot set right there. You- that says, oh, no, it's just figuratively speaking. You know, no, it's literally the angels literally had sex with the woman on the earth, and yeah. they, the offspring was giants or um, that became giants, I mean, or uh, men of renown, which is meant like, uh, you know, yeah. super abilities, like like yeah. uh, Greek mythology, right? And um, yeah. the Greeks, uh, they got it like 98% right, except for the point, and it's not mythology. Uh, they went, well, the Greeks thought the fallen angels were gods, and... Um, the, um, you know, that offspring with, de- you know, demigods. Yes. And But, you know, actually the fallen angels and the sons of God. And, um, you know, I mean, the dead offspring was just Nephilim, you know what I mean? So, yep. uh, but the set right there, he tries to dismiss all that. And, That's you know, dangerous. And ridiculous, right? And paint that ancient alien thing and like, oh, yeah, we're, you know, aliens are real and all that when the Bible says they're including spirits in Revelation 16, you know. <laughs> That, that's very dangerous and these people are not covered under the blood of the lamb with nope. those type of ideas they're already deceived which is yeah. scary because we hear of things like they're going to fake an alien invasion or like the alien ascension is the same as the Christian rapture and I've heard they're going to use like Project Blue Beam or Project Gen- Genesis to fake Jesus's return or fake a rapture or whatnot. And the only way, I think the gift of discernment comes in huge. The only way that we're going to know that it's advanced technology used on us, like what they did in 9-11, the only way we're going to know that is through the Holy Spirit and to rely on Him. Because if these people are believing in false doctrine and twisting around the Bible and coming up with new theories to believe, then they're simply not covered in the blood of the Lamb. And when voice to skull V2K technology is used, it's going to hit them. They're, they're going to hear a voice in their head that mimics God, and it's saying their name, and it's so personal. And um, it'll have a kind, familiar feeling to it. They're going to be so swayed and deceived because they're not covered under the blood of the lamb that yep. that technology is going to completely fool them that, yep. that's very scary it is and yeah. plus uh, if we you know you know the scriptures and you get the detail by detail the signs happen for us and uh you know if these signs don't happen and you see something like that that's not jesus you know what i mean he says uh, and he, he sticks to his word 
And he says, uh, does, you know, we know the big, big events, as many events happen, but the big events is number one, the Antichrist is going to be revealed for us. Then, uh, not too soon after that, he says, uh, that the sun, moon, and stars, uh, the sun and moon is going to lose its light. We don't know if that's an eclipse or whatever, but that's going to happen. Right after that, the, sun, the stars are literally going to fall from the sky and the heavens are going to be shaken. Then Jesus comes through the clouds. But if we, right now, if we looked around and see Jesus come through the clouds, well, what it appears to be, I'm going to question that because, um, and there's some like, uh, you know, probably Project Bluebeam or something. Yeah. I'm going to question that because, and, you know, I think they might pull something off like that. So we're yeah. still here. They're like, oh, why are we still here then? And, uh, you know, uh, you know, the people think that he abandoned us, you know, whatever the case, they could do yeah. anything with that stuff. But I know if I see something like that right now, and first of all, when he comes, or every eye is going to see it. You know, I, even with Project Bluebeam, they couldn't pull something off like that. The whole world sees it. You know? Right. Yeah, I everybody's agree. Everybody's going to see it. So, like, um, when he comes, everybody's going to see it. And number two, um, you know, when I when we see the Antichrist come to power, he goes right after that because he says that for you know, it, for the sake of the elect, he's going to cut those days short. Yes. There will be no flesh left alive. If Satan's running this planet, forget it. We're all dead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He, he's going to have us all transhuman, basically. Yep. Metal and uh, machine and flesh mixed. Yep. You know, I saw a report not too long ago that said um, the moon has rust on it at the at its north pole and at its south pole, or basically at its top and at its bottom. There's actually rust forming on the moon, and it's blood red in color. Oh. So I uh, I see uh, Daniel Bedondi Jr. in the chat room. <laughs> Hello. So. Yep, that's me. My other Facebook. Oh, that's you. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was a family member or not. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. What's up, uh, Lou Viva? Lou Viva. She's in the um, chat too. Yeah. She's got uh, one of the frequent listeners. Yeah. It's just Lou Viva. Lou Viva and Angelique. I'm glad that they joined us. Yeah, Angelique. How you doing, Angelique? So, so if you guys are listening to the show, guys, in the chat room, just um, type in, like, uh, your name and where you're from. That'd be pretty cool to see. Uh, your, you know, your city, whatever, your city, state, whatever, where you live. And to join us, I guess you got to sign up. Uh, I just hit quick sign up. Uh, when you hit join, you can sign up with your Facebook. It only takes a second. Or your Twitter, so. That's what I did, too. Well, I have to go through Fringe's network but when i'm on my own yeah i always sign sign in through facebook it's easier that way but yeah so if you got any questions guys in the chat room do like put a question and we'll hopefully get to it absolutely so what do you uh what can i am i am i allowed to ask when do you think you know the great tribulation might begin uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know some bad stuff happening, but the bad stuff's going to happen for us. But um, the sooner, you know, the, that means the sooner he's coming, you know? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's just looking like every day that's just getting closer and closer. And, um, you know, they, you, we know that one of the big things, too, is the push of the mark of the beast, which is going to be pushed by the Antichrist. I mean, and, uh, and there's a lot of confusion about that. And uh, these people... Like, as soon as this uh, vaccine thing came out, right, everybody's jumping all over it. This is the mark of the beast. So I'm like, hold, hold your horns for a minute. Hold on a second, because read the prophecies first. Like, the, you know, things have to happen first before the mark of the beast comes. And when people say, um, there was another one, too, with the CERN thing. People say it was uh, Revelation 6, I think, or whatever, with um, the abyss. Yes, when the locusts so, uh, come out. I think it was uh, the... The fourth angel blew its trumpet or whatever. I forgot what angel it was. But it's like, we got to stop for a minute, right? We got to see what happens with the other trumpets first. See if those things came to pass. Because the Bible's not going to skip over the first or five trumpets. Right. You know what I mean? It was the sixth trumpet, I think. So uh, he's not going to skip over the five, you know, five trumpets and wait to the sixth and do that. So we need to relax ourselves. Like the mark of the beast, right? What does the Bible say about that? He says, he causes all small and great. He, referring to the Antichrist, right? So right now, the Antichrist is not in power. So number one, that alone should debunk the whole thing. Number two is specify if in the right hand or in the flag. Not in the arm. Most people get it in the left arm. 
you know, not in the arm, not in the butt, uh, right. you know, wherever, or the right. nipple, whatever. Right. You know, in, that right, in the right hand or the forehead, Pierre, plain and simple. It's very right. specific. And, yeah. And people say, well, that, you know, one guy uh, from this ministry, he was trying to say, uh, uh, man, he was like, oh, if you look at the scriptures and uh, the concordance, uh, right hand means uh, power and authority, with the, the crown. Uh, and it's like, no, it's like, we understand that, that. But the thing is, John on the island of Patmos, he's literally seeing, okay, he's not giving you a figurative of speaking. He's literally seeing into the future. Jesus is showing him what's going on in the future. He's literally seeing something being put in the person's right hand on the forehead. Yeah, you know, they're not saying, oh, that means crown and authority or whatever the case. No, something's literally going in their right hand or in their forehead. You know what I mean? And you can't buy, sell, or save without it. And, uh, and uh, the Bible says, know your enemy. So if you look at uh, the globals, right, the Rockefellers and yep. all, you know, uh, Klaus Schwab and all that, they've been saying for decades, we want everybody microchips, plain and simple. And under this microchip system, and uh, see, the mark of the beast, the, the physical part, because of you know, the virtual part, you've got to take allegiance to the beast. You have to literally worship in a system. And so um, the the physical mark is made of several components. Not It's not a vaccine, you know, just one thing, bang, and you have to willingly take it. You know what I mean? You can't just be fooled into taking it, you know? And there's a lot of people afraid, oh, man, my mother took the vaccine, is she going to go to hell? You know what I mean? I got so many calls or, you know, messages, people afraid that they took it too, that, that you know, they thought it was the mark of the beast. I'm like, no, it's like, you know, I don't know who you know, these ministries out there that swear by this. You know what I mean? It's uh, Brother Nathaniel and this other guy, yeah. um, you know, all these people who spread this stuff out. It's like, no, it's like, we're not there yet. The, the Antichrist, number one, has to be in power. Number two, there has to be a digital system set up because how else can you buy, sell, and save? And here we are, yeah. 2000, two years after the pandemic, yeah? I can, live, I, I can go into the store right now, up the street, and go buy something. I'm still uh, saving and all that, you know, so I haven't took the, um, the vaccine, you know what I mean? So that debunks it right there, and the thing is the mark of the beast doesn't fail. You know, the vaccine's already failed, the clutch ruled against it, you know what I mean, it, it's dead in the water, you know what I mean? And uh, these people refuse to, uh, to be, you know, they don't want to be wrong. And it's like, well, you're not wrong, I'm just saying you're yeah. wrong because you learned the wrong way, you know what I mean? The Bible makes it very clear, and uh, so the globalists are setting up the system, basically, the mark of the beast, the physical one, is made up of several components. You have to have a digital cash of society for us. You got a digital passport, which does have all your vaccine information and all that stuff. And also, you got a digital um, identification system. So basically, everything in your wallet and purse, uh, your scan saver cards, credit cards, gym card, uh, Walmart card, if you got one, or whatever the case, you know what I mean? Uh, these. Uh, uh, discount cards and banks and all that stuff, all that stuff, your driver's license, all that's going to be on that digital in, implant. And, you know, in, in plain and simple. So you don't need, first of all, to um, push them into apps for us. That's where everything's going on apps now on the phone. And they know it's not foolproof, so they're going to, that's when they're going to start selling. Hey, listen, which they're already doing now, you know what I mean? Making it look good. There you can swipe your hand and start your car now, or you can swipe your hand to go into work in the Wisconsin. And in, uh, in Sweden, they got tens of thousands of people with the microchip. That you know, all you do is go to a store and you, you, you get what you want, and it scans everything in the you know the uh, system there, and it takes it off your chip there. You know what I mean? That's and nuts. you don't have to touch no cash. You know what I mean? So, uh, it, you know, and again, it, it says he causes all small and great, rich and poor. That's Revelation 13. You know what I mean? So um, you know the people, you know people like they see something, yeah, and it does. Uh, the, the virus, I'm sorry, the vaccine mandate have a lot in common? Yeah, absolutely. These are called precursors. They'll have a lot in common, a lot of similarities to that thing they're trying to push, like the mark of the beast, but it's not the actual mark because, uh, again, it's in the right hand or in the forehead, not the left arm, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know what I mean? Like, plain and simple, you need something that's an uh, 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 economic chip that's going to have everything about you on that chip. Everything from your health care, from your born, all your records and vaccines and um, hospital visits and you know, bank cards and everything else. And uh, just everything all in that one check. You know what I mean? That's what the globals are calling for. Oh, boy. That, that's nuts. Yeah. There goes all of our freedom. Yep. Oh, yeah. And uh, Biden's trying to push a uh, digital currency by December. I'm... And it's weird because the Vatican just announced uh, they want by... Uh, October 31st, the other thing we get to the article, but um, 
the Vatican announced that they the all the assets all to go to the um, I think it's Holy See. Hang on a second, let me get that article because um that that's very significant. It, it's uh, very uh, crazy, man, that they try to pull all the... This is it, yeah. Let's go ahead and look. the Wednesday show, so... Yeah, I'm worried for them to say, okay, well, unless you get a vaccine or unless you do this or that, um, your disability benefits are now officially cut off, Miss Baglio. <laughs> So yep. I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. Um, I'm saving up to purchase a tent now as we speak. <laughs> but um, Oh, it's right here. Pope Francis instructs Vatican entities to move all funds to the Vatican Bank by September 30th. And that's, uh, he ordered the Holy See and connected entities to move all financial assets to the institution for works of religion. That's uh, Iowa, the commonly known as the Vatican Bank. So the Pope's instructed everything, like well, money, financial assets, everything financial, to be moved to the Vatican Bank by September 30th. So you, you, you know the Vatican, they got their hands and everything. So he knows there's something going on. And you got Biden hell bent on pushing that uh, digital yep. currency real quick. They, they said by December, but I think that's you know, fast-tracking it to October. You know what I mean? Because all of a sudden they're pointing to... Uh, you know, you know, to the uh, October. But uh, that, that's what they're trying to do. And again, uh, we got to go according to God's plan because every time the global sets something in a date, yeah. and most of the time it, it gets stopped or something happens and it doesn't happen because the father throws the monkey wrench in the works. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they were saying that, you know, I'm going to sign that world treaty. Uh, it was earlier this year and it, it failed because <laughs> the father threw the monkey wrench in the works, you know, caused a lot of conditions to get out of it. And uh, so... Yeah, that's the other thing too. People, uh, when we see these things happening, but if it's not according to God's time, and He's not going to allow it, you know, and it doesn't matter how much money they spend, who's behind it. If God says no, it's not, you know, plain and simple. Yeah. But 2010. Remember Obama? They were already signing that World Treaty, yeah. and uh, for the Climate Change Initiative. Yes. Um, that day they're about to sign, right? Washington D.C. got hit with a wrecking uh, blizzard. And all of Europe just about was covered in snow for the first time in history. And they're like, wait, hold on. If this is global warming, why do we have a record snow like this? So it caused several nations to back out of the deal. And that was the father through the monkey wrench in the works. Because if it didn't snow, those nations would have signed that. And we'd be in the new world order right now. Oh, wow. Thank you, Father. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, they get the share, too, when they were that, uh, that green new deal that all the nations are supposed to sign. Several right. nations backed out at the last minute. Heavenly Abba's generous with the time that he's giving us to get right yeah. with him. He really is. And that even goes for me on a personal level. Even though I have a relationship with him, there's still things in my personal life that I'd really like to get right, give up, and just, you know, do before the Antichrist is revealed. You? Yeah. So, wow. That'd be pretty interesting, that's for sure. It is. I can't wait to see how everything plays out, but I absolutely agree with you. What the Bible says, literally for black and white, what it says, that's what's going to happen. Yep. So. And like we like to go by is um, we always read the Bible in its context, and uh, yeah, context is key, and let the scripture interpret scripture. So if you don't not quite understand something, read it, keep reading, and you'll see something that will define what I was talking about. It's amazing, it really is, and. Uh, you know, that, and again, the churches don't want you to do that. That's why they um, throw in a bunch of verses together. Like when you hear a sermon, instead of them go through the whole book, just say chapter one of Matthew, right? They'll go through a few verses of chapter one, then they'll jump all over the place to try to fit their agenda. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or distort it. But instead, of, like right now, I'm doing a, a Bible series. And I started with the book of Jude, which is only one chapter. And I'm um, into Matthew. We're going to be on Matthew chapter six uh, coming Tuesday. So basically what it does is I go through one chapter at a time, and um, we read through the chapter, and we stop. Every verse, um, pull out the context of the verse, what it means, and explain it in uh, layman's terms, uh, you know, to try to get the people to understand what it exactly it's saying. And what I do is, I, what I'm doing it to, I'm learning it myself. And I uh, pray for the Holy Spirit to lead me to teach people, and, um, you know, for him to teach 
me and the people at the same time, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and it's working out great, you know, and uh, it's a great teaching. And uh, what was it, chapter five we just had? I think it was chapter four or five. I spent like literally an hour on that one chapter. Now, yeah, like you can redo that whole chapter probably in like maybe two minutes if you're a speed reader, a little less. But we don't do that when we start, we read very slow and carefully. And uh, that's why I always tell people if you read the scriptures, it's not like a novel or a magazine. You don't just skim through it and read it. You know, you know, speed read it through it. You know what I mean? You gotta slow down. Yeah. You gotta stop. And it's like, if you don't understand the word, go a little bit the meaning for it. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Take your time, like, until you fully absorb it, then move on. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, because there's so much context in those scriptures. Yeah. And Matthew is a great canon to be studying because that is so misunderstood in a lot of different areas in that book. You know, the great thing about the book of Matthew is, I, go, I call it the nuclear bomb against false religion in the cult. Because, um, you know, you get Freemasonry, they say that, you know, that first say that, like, Christian, like, the Catholic Church, Mormons, uh, jo um, Islam and all that, they misinterpret the Bible to say they're the true religion. But if you actually read the book of Matthew, everything that Jesus, the words of read, everything that Jesus himself says, there's something in those contexts that destroys the entire... Um, religion of uh, Islam or uh, um, uh, uh, Mormons or uh, you know Jehovah Witnesses or whatever religion or the Catholic Church especially <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it eradicates them you know you don't yeah. pray to uh, Mary uh, you don't use right vain and repetition prayer you know you only pray to him through him to the Father you don't pray, pray to saints you don't pray to angels or, or dead people or anything like that and yeah, you know, which they, you know, and also confess your sins to with your mouth to the Lord. You know, what I mean, do it in secret. You know, not for a priest. You know? Right. <laughs> or you don't call a priest father either. You know, that they call him the Pope, Holy Father, I, is a blasphemous thing in the world. It is. I wouldn't be able to do that. I I would feel completely like I was cheating on Heavenly Abba anyway. You know, I would never call somebody else Heavenly Father. I think it was with my mother years ago. We went to pick up my cousin at the hospital, right? And uh, it was a priest that she goes, how are you doing, Father? And I'm like, don't call him Father. It's like, uh, our Father's in heaven. Wow. You know, at the throne, he just looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that's definitely a sign of the times. Yeah. You know, I, I've definitely cleaned out my house, and one of the things I paid special attention to was my bookshelves to make sure that I did not have books that had an author who calls himself rabbi or father. I got rid of them very quickly because the Bible says, Duh, Jesus is our rabbi. Don't call yourselves that. Yep. So. Absolutely. I got my book library, you know, library books there, and um, I put tags on the back of the books uh, for the ones I like. I told my wife that it's like if something happens to me, uh, books with these tags on the back. I said, don't sell them, don't give them away. I want you to destroy them. I'm talking about burning them, <laughs> burning them back down in the fire pit. You know what I mean? And because uh, I got uh, books on the occult, I got books on uh, Freemasonry and you know, uh, morals and dogma and stuff like that, yeah. which is. Uh, spiritual, spiritual pollution. Eh? It's spiritual filth. That's what those books are. And uh, what I did is when I got them, I prayed over them and asked the Father to bind any evil from those books because we use them as an educational purpose. And I don't recommend people get these books. Uh, but the stuff that we do um, on our shows, spiritual warfare, we give you the right from the horse's mouth. You know, that's way yeah. people can't say, "Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist or a Freemason or somebody in that." particular cult to say, oh, you're a lion. No, I'm not lying straight from your own doctrines. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, it's right there. You know what I mean? And uh, we do it as an educational purpose, but even still, I don't recommend anybody reading those books, um, especially Morals and Dogma. It's probably one of the most filthiest pieces of trash there is, uh, I mean, uh, spiritually. And uh, when I do have to recite out of that book, I have to read the scriptures because I feel spiritually filthy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I was thinking about using my library card to to get out books because I wanted to increase my education to understand, yeah. you know, better how Luciferians and Satanists, they go about doing whatever they're doing so I can be more efficient 
advancing the kingdom of heaven if you know if yeah. I know my enemy then I, I have an advantage but uh, I will definitely keep in mind to always stay prayed up but definitely to pray over the books yeah and uh, and that's the father to you know the Holy Spirit too to um, you know help you don't get influenced by any of this stuff you know what I mean and uh, so basically the way I explain to people if uh, when you look into that stuff you're looking to the abyss and if you don't have that spiritual anchor that's holding you <laughs> yeah you, you gotta get stuck right into that abyss real quick and uh, yeah the yeah. The abyss starts looking back at you. <laughs> yep. They uh, pull you right in. If you don't have that spiritual anchor tied up to you, yeah, you got to go away with it, you know. And, uh, yeah. So there's some evil stuff, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, people like you, you've been teaching for a while, too. So, I mean, like, I recommend people out there uh, that you make sure you're ground, grounded in the faith very well, like in the Word of God, uh, to know the Word of God very well and, to, you know, to know spiritual warfare very well because... Uh, even for Christians out there, when you go look into these books and all that, people could even be swayed by these things, and uh, because this is pure unadulterated evil, this in these yeah. books. There's literally incantations on these books and everything. That's why you need to really pray over these things because um, they they use incantations and spells like that to like give demons dominion over these things and everything. And the words that they're speaking, like uh, if you're reading it you could cast out an incantation and not even know it. You know what I mean? So these things are very crafty and evil. Uh, wow. You know what I mean? This is thousands of years of cult history, you know, that into these books there. Especially Albert Pike's books, man. Yeah. Well, you know, and, uh, Manly P. Hall and you know, Alistair Crowley, people like them. These are the cream of the crop evil people, you know. And, uh, so these guys uh, know their stuff very well. Wow. I'm, I'm going to have to check them out just because I have a yeah. curious mind, but I'll definitely stay prayed up i also yeah. thought like looking into those books it could probably help me to deprogram from the mk ultra and the satanic ritual abuse because i would be seeing you know what it is they do and it might help me to piece together my fragmented memories to make sense of them because i can't understand you know what happened but, yeah, that's uh, well, speaking of that, man, I think that's why this whole mass mandate thing, I think that was part of ritual because I know a lot of um, a lot of the occults, what they do is before they, they want to shape you like in true masonry, right? Uh, they consider you a block, a square block, and they, their goal is to shape you into a perfect cornerstone. So, um, you uh, know, there's a lot of rituals with masks and everything, and especially in the occult, because the thing is they want to mask you and isolate you, and uh, this way it, it you forget who you are, it takes your self individuality away, and yeah. so they can rebuild you from this, you know, ground up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they want to rob you of all your innocence, rob you of all, everything from you, like your, your self. You know what I mean? Everything's got, everybody's got somebody, something special about them. You know what I mean? Their own uniqueness. So they want to take that away from you, all of it, and isolate you, and seclude you from all the world. Then they want to stop building you back up their way. You know what I mean? And you know, chip you into that perfect cornerstone. And, you know, it's very ugly. And it, that, well, if you get to that point, it's just like, it's very hard. Only the father can turn somebody, away, you know, back to, to the faith or whatever. But that's just the place you don't want to be. That's like spiritual fire. And uh, a lot of people join these occults because they think it's fun. Uh, you know, they want to be part of something. Especially if they're, uh, you know, a lot of people are outcasts in schools. You know, yeah. you, don't, you don't have no friends or outcasts, whatever the case. They'll join these things because they feel part of something. Yep. And it's unfortunate, it really is. And I've always hung out the outcasts. You know what I mean? Me like, too. Uh, hey, yeah, hang out and talk to them and all that. I never, and I was an athlete. You know what I mean, I was a, a star wrestler on the team, you know? Nice. And, um, I always went up to them, sat up with them at the tables and talked to them. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I try to, you know, help them out and all that stuff. And I never shunned anybody, especially the yeah. people who have been shunned. I've always, I was, I was always the one to, you know, just go over there and start talking to them. And, you know, I knew everybody in the school, you know what I mean? I wasn't the most popular, but I knew everybody, you know? And, uh, so I, 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 I did not talk to people because I was afraid what other people were going to say if you care less, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's how I, I am to, the, to this day, you know? I'll see that widow on the street talking to himself and I'll go talk to the person, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way, absolutely. I, um, you know, in listening to you, it made sense when you were talking about the masks now it totally makes sense. Biden's campaign slogan, yep. build back better. That's what yep. they were doing with the masks was building 
back a certain type of humanity that they want or a certain type of human that they wanted, which is a robot. You had a point right there. I'm uh, thinking about that, right? Build back better because now look at people today. They're frantic. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, the suicide rates going through the roof, especially with teens and everything. Yeah. Because it completely robbed them of their social life and everything. And uh, it's just going through the roof. And people are all committed to isolation now. There's more people in isolation now. There's uh, and people like they're, they got the Stockholm Syndrome. Yep. Still driving around, even though the CDC just came out to say uh, vaccinated or not, everybody's got the same status now. So everything's back to normal. And so everybody gets the vaccine, which is like literally for nothing. Yeah. But you still see people out there driving with masks on and gloves. You know what I mean? And, uh, and people just isolating their win now. You know what I mean? And uh, so I think, yeah, they really pulled people uh, just into another, you know, it, like isolated them and made them different people, build them back in a way. Yeah. Th- that's when you were talking, Dan, and you had said, you know, they, they made us put the masks on to take away our individuality and yeah. they're building a new human. And you're absolutely right. Now it makes sense why the campaign slogan was "Build Back Better." Yep, rob, of, rob us of our humanity. Man, they're gonna have a heavy price to pay. They really are. On Judgment Day. Yep. And you got some people out there so frantic, man, and uh, you know, like they're, they're like they'll freak out if somebody sneezes or something because all the the brainwashing they see <laughs> on TV. I see these commercials and um. Watching a football game or something, and the commercials uh, in between, they, it was like uh, weird. It was like, uh, you ever see the movie Halloween, the one without Michael Myers? It yeah. was the one with the mask. I think the so. Halloween mask. Yes, I remember. They brain washing and stuff. They had this weird music playing. They, it was just the same way. They had different color, like uh, stay inside, mask up, uh, get your vaccination. And it was like, it was like creepy, like mind control. They had different mm-hmm. colors flashing on the screen. And it was like, yeah. wow, it's just some of a Halloween movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. and, and the other, the mind control. It was funny, too, because the other day I was um, at this place called Stop and Shop. It's a supermarket chain yeah. here in New England. So it's, uh, I was in a supermarket, and they were playing the music, and all of a sudden that commercials come on. And then they were saying, hey, don't forget to stop at the Stop and Shop pharmacy here. Where you can get your COVID vaccines, and don't forget your flu shots, and blah blah blah. They're going on about how these things are so great for you and your family. Then right at the end, but they say, and nobody caught on to. It. I'm looking around, nobody's just caught on to. It. They said, don't forget to uh, uh, pick up some of our scented markers. <laughs> so I'm like, and I'm like, I stop. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, that explains everything right there. Guys, yeah. looking at me, you know, and I just because I was talking out loud. I'm like that explains everything right there. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get some poison vaccines and everything else. And I, I, by the way, come and sniff some markers too. <laughs> but yeah, that, that you might as well put some sniffable glue too. You know? Right, <laughs> right. And, and it's so easy to distract people with something like that. Now it just goes right over their head. They're not paying attention. They wow. probably could tell people, "Oh, don't forget to get some ammunition. Put a bullet in head." <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> Wow, yep, they're all mind controlled and brainwashed. Yeah. It's gonna and be this stuff sticks out like a soft thumb too. It does. To us it does. But that's because I think now we're looking for it. So in the televisions, man, like uh, all day like uh, I stare at computer screens, you know what I mean, even at work. And it's not like it doesn't pull you to them. But when you're watching a television broadcast, it's weird. You sit. You could be sitting in a restaurant. They got a TV playing. Yet you're, you're talking to somebody, but you keep keep glancing at the TV, even if it's something you don't like on TV. Yeah. And it's like it pulls you to that damn TV, you know. Especially when the news is on. And it's like, uh, you know, like this, like uh, that's why they call it a broadcast because it's a ritual, you know, mind control thing that's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the laundromat the other day, and Biden started playing on the TV, and. I don't have TV at home. I just have internet. But while I was folding my laundry, I tell you, I got aggravated. Thank heavens I was the only one in the laundromat. But I started yelling at Biden on the TV. So, (laughs) (laughs) I think. Yeah. Um, Shut up, you liar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was about along the lines of what I was saying, too. 
maybe a little bit more stronger words because again I was by myself but yeah. oh boy what this country is coming to I don't know I don't yeah, know. the stuff they come out now, they openly come out and say what they're going to do. No more hide it, no more, you know. Yep, yep. And not for me not to have TV, when I do visit a friend who watches TV and I see the commercials and stuff, I'm actually blown away with the, the, the comments, um, the jokes and things they say. I remember in high school getting in trouble for some of the jokes that you hear now on TV or one of the one-liners um, in series, like the things they come out with, it's all sexual, it's all condescending, and it's people just being a wise ass, and it's not really that funny. Um, nope. No, not at all. But now, uh, I, was, I was watching, um, I don't watch TV that much, and um, sometimes I put the TV on, and uh, during the commercials, it was uh, like three commercials in a row had a gay couple. Yeah, there was a commercial that advertised for a show, and then this uh this movie, uh this movie coming out too. It's like um, it shows a gay couple with kids, you oh, know, two big men, and I'm like, you know, come on, you know what I mean? I'm sick. Yeah, that makes me really uncomfortable. I I just yeah. don't like it. You know, I, I understand people have their lifestyles and whatnot, but I just. I, I can't watch TV for that. And I noticed that, I guess, over the decade, they're coming out with more series to, you know, with gay or lesbian couples or, you know, threesomes. And I just, I can't, that stuff, I just, I start squirming in my seat and I have to turn it off. Before you know it, they're going to have episodes where uh, the kids in bed with adults. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, that's coming. And, uh, because the perversion just doesn't stop, you know. And uh, yeah, they're, they're already saying, "Oh, you shouldn't call people pedophiles; it's offensive." Call minor attractive people, and maps uh, they call them. Oh God, that's gross! No, they're pedophiles. They're standing yeah. pedophiles. Yeah. Yep. Oh my goodness! Yeah, make the predator feel nice and comfortable, and pat them on the back and give them the tissue because it just must be so tough for them to be a pedophile. Yeah. Well, they're pressing their face. You know, it's messed up. Um, I, I think, it, well, in Texas and all that, uh, they, they got strong penalties for uh, pedophilia. Very strong. But in Rhode Island here, oh, man, it, it, it's crazy. I used to live in West Warwick, Rhode Island, and it's like uh, one of the cities where a lot of pedophiles moved to, for whatever reason. So we get these notices in the mail, because they have to you know, mail out to everybody uh, that a pedophile is moving in the area, whatever the case, right? And I'm looking, I'm uh, eating breakfast where they're looking at the, pa you know, the, the paper on the table. I spit my food out. And I'm like, because like, I almost choked on the food because I'm like, what the blank? You know what I mean? I swore to it because it was just that bad, you know. And, uh, and I'm looking at it, and uh, it, it wasn't a one-time offender. Three-time offender, uh, a penetration with a uh, four-year-old. And, uh, and I'm like, how in the hell is this guy out of jail? How? How is he allowed to be on probation walking around? Oh, my you know, like, gosh. Well, you go rob a bank in Rhode Island, right? If you went to do armed robbery at a bank, you go for 20, 30 years. Then we are rightfully so, whatever the case, but you get more of a penalty robbing a bank when you don't even have to kill nobody or shoot nobody. You go to jail longer Rhode Island than you do for um, raping a child. That's nuts. Yeah, and these people will back out on the streets again and doing it again. You know, and, uh, you know one guy... Uh, he said, uh, I think he served like five years at that. And meanwhile, five that child is... And, and some of these people less. That's crazy. And meanwhile, the the, per, the child they raped, the child is destroyed for their entire life. Oh, my God. I got some friends over there. I got to see if I, they can collect those for me. Actually, you know what? Yeah. We're only talking. I'm going out. Website here because, like, um... The West Warwick Police Department. This. The system is set up to protect the predators. It's crazy. Sex offenders list. So, stuff just makes you blood boil. It really does. Uh, I yeah, can't, it's, I can't remember, but in New Jersey, I thought we had um, 
uh, a law that said basically str- three strikes you're out. So like if you have like uh, three drug charges, well then you're just out. There's no more chances. I don't. It, it, that's I, I can't really remember, but it was something along the lines. They have stiffer penalties for dealing drugs in New Jersey than for rape or assault or any domestic violence altercation. It should be the other way around. Yeah. It's a sadness, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. Wow, so let's see. Yeah, so we're, we're Raymond Jakes. Uh, so I get the, they show the people, but few details. Level three. Uh, Yeah, we have to pull those up. We get these printed out, but yeah, it's crazy. No, uh, these set. Uh, let's, uh, details. Get convicted, and uh, yeah, it's not saying everything on here. But yeah, the the notices you get in the mail, it's like uh, it's disgusting. Yeah, it shows you like um, they committed a uh, first degree, second degree, whatever the case, and then you look their names up in the you know the newspapers, so you can see their um, their records, what they did to a kid or something. If that's supposed to stop a pedophile from committing another crime, that's not going to work. No. Um, nope. It's insane. Yeah. My goodness. Well, Heavenly Abba is going to have a lot of wrath, judgment, and vengeance upon his return. Our poor children. Yeah. So, well, Dan, I am so grateful and humbled that you joined me this evening. I've been wanting to uh, do a broadcast with you for so many months now that this has just been a huge honor and pleasure for me. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, before I wrap this up, I just wanted to ask you one more time, if you don't mind repeating yourself, where can people find you? Uh, TruthRadioShow.com Okay, and... Next, oh, my uh, social media pages, the links, like every time I go on, have a show go on yeah, the links are posted on that, right on the front page, so if you go there, you can actually watch it on the website. Or you click it and go to that platform because uh, Wednesdays we go to Rumble and um, Mondays and Fridays run uh, YouTube. Okay, great, and that's TruthRadioShow.com, all one yep. word. Oh, Correct. great. Well, um, I'd like to close us out in prayer, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Okay, Heavenly Abba, I come before you. And I want to say thank you so much for bringing us together tonight and for this platform. Heavenly Abba, I lift up Dan Badoni and his ministry and loved ones uh, and his loved ones to you. Please bless them greatly and anoint them for an incredible role for you and, and carrying Yeshua's gospel. Heavenly Abba, please protect Dan and his loved ones and please, please send down your warring angels to minister to Dan, but also to protect him because being on the front lines as he is, it brings down a ton of spiritual warfare. Heavenly Abba, thank you so much for our time tonight and thank you for Angelique and Lariva as well as everyone else joining us in our chat. Thank you so much, Heavenly Abba. In Yeshua's name I pray, Selah. Amen. And uh, thank you, Angelique and uh, Louisa, for joining us and uh, whoever else is listening out there. So, um, and thank you, Holly, for everything. And they got to get you on our show again. Uh, that spiritual warfare, I don't know if you heard uh, the update. Uh, it's, we're, we're moving the time down to 10 o'clock starting this Friday. Oh, perfect. I'll be able to stay awake. <laughs> yeah. 
because that trust was at one o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Then, uh, you know, in, in even in old, out in Europe, it's like uh, you know, like it's like later in the morning. But I don't know. It's about trying to move to a good time that's uh, suitable. So uh, we think about ten o'clock, and it's right after the Remnant Restoration for John and Patricia Wall. So right after that show at ten o'clock, we're, we're going to be doing that. And um, uh, Brian Reese is going to be our new co-host. Oh, so great. me and Brian Reese going to tag team this, and uh, then we're still going to have guests on too, have you on and all that too. And uh, we're going to be like, um, our thing is, because we, we, uh, we got Saturday night, you got the midnight ride, and yes. then you got uh, Breaking Babylon on a Sunday night. So we're going to have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just like three shows straight in a row. We're all spiritual warfare, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, 10 o'clock Friday night, it's us, and uh, 11 o'clock Saturday night, so... Uh, midnight ride, then I think it's eight o'clock on Sundays is uh, Breaking Bad one. So um, three great shows in a row, just like uh, smashing up this uh, spiritual warfare. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was gonna say I, I love my weekends now because of you, and now you see TV and Remnant Radio. I I have yeah. something to look forward to, whereas I used to never like my weekends. So yeah, it's fun. They're you. gonna be coming out to Rhode Island. We're doing a group meet and greet for uh toward the end of the month, maybe the third week in September. So uh, John Hall, John Pounders, David Carrico, and Trish and all them. Oh. So we're going to big meet and greet out here in Rhode Island, do some baptisms and everything. Oh, boy. I hope my car is fixed by them because I'd love to come up and meet you face to face. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it would be. It would be. Well, thank you so much, Dan. And also, um, I want to send out our blessings to... Mr. and Mrs. John Hall, Mr. and Mrs. David Carrico, and Mr. and Mrs. John Pounders. So we love you guys. But uh, thank you so much, Dan. This was a huge honor and pleasure, and I look forward to having you back again. Absolutely. And shalom. Shalom.